So that's the opening. Imagine you are, uh, you will be divided into planning cells, what is called planning team, uh, sometimes composed, or usually composed from uh, uh, people representing various angles of uh, the view, different agencies, and in the end you are to produce a briefing. Yeah. Uh, what we will do, uh, I did the overview, timeline, situational briefing, uh, then part of the situational briefing will be uh, testimony and the uh, uh, report from the ground, Q&A, you're asking questions, clarifications. Then uh, working groups, this is a minimal time, 30 minutes, I hope we'll have more time for that. And then presentation, uh, four times five minutes or five times five minutes? It depends. Maybe we will have four groups because it's, uh, it's a large group. Conclusions. Uh, to uh, skip the long uh, uh, briefing about the political situation, I've picked up two uh, symbols. Uh, which, in my view, characterize the situation in Ukraine nowadays. To the left, you have uh, uh, a kind of upgraded version <laughs> of the communist symbol from the uh, town of Krasnoarmysk. Uh, it's a communist symbol, uh, but colored in uh, national colors of Ukraine. <laughs> And that's uh, one uh, aspect of uh, development in Ukraine. Ukraine is finally getting rid of the communist heritage, of the Soviet heritage. That's a very important element of the political development of this uh, last Maidan. The Orange Revolution uh, 11 years ago didn't manage that, but only after uh, uh, last Maidan, <laughs> Uh, the symbols of communism uh, have been thrown away. The statues of Lenin are falling in, in, in various cities. And it's just symbol. I mean, it's, it's a symbol of the uh, emancipation from the, uh, from the communist heritage. So 25 years after changes in this part of the world, we have basically post-communist Ukraine getting rid of not of communism, but of post-communism, uh, uh, which actually developed uh, a, a very dangerous uh, and uh, uh, a mixture of, uh, 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 of situation, internal uh, situation in the society and in the government. To the right, uh, Ukrainians don't, don't answer that, but I mean, those who, who are not from Ukraine, do you know what it is? What is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, Ukrainian national flag uh, which has a longer tradition than uh, being used by the Ukrainian nationalist uh, uh, movement in, during the Second World War. But it's used by, uh, by nationalist movement uh, uh, today. And sometimes you see uh, the official flag, which is yellow, blue, and the red black flag next to each other, not against each other. Sometimes you see them against, like recently in, in, in Mukachevo. Now, this was the uh, estimate of the overall situation a uh, year ago. Uh, it was a very conservative estimate, uh, and it took into account only Russian troops which were actually uh, prepared to take action in Ukraine. So it doesn't take into account the massive asymmetry between uh, Russian and Ukrainian armed forces, uh, which is there because the Russian armed forces are much, much, much bigger. But that was the estimate uh, uh, from, from last year. You can see uh, the estimated 40,000 uh, uh, troops massed on the border. Some say it, uh, it's certain periods before the offensive last year, uh, and maybe now it's also uh, uh, increasing. It could be even more, 60,000, who knows. Uh, 25,000 in Crimea, 
which was annexed, and uh, uh, a very important, uh, uh, almost 2,000 troops in Transnistria, uh, which is officially part of Moldova, but it's one of the, uh, one of the uh, 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 conflicts, uh, frozen conflicts. And last year uh, and this spring, there was a fear that uh, Russia would like to create a corridor to Crimea and maybe through Odessa to Transnistria region, uh, actually to deprive Ukraine uh, the access, not only to Crimea, but to, to the sea. And there are some places which were considered as risky places, uh, including a uh, uh, town of Kharkiv, when we last met uh, with Vitaly uh, months ago, and, uh, and also the uh, 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 towns of Donetsk, Luhansk, uh, Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, uh, the places which are now under control of uh, Ukrainian uh, government in Kiev, and also Mariupol. So that's uh, the overview. Now, this assessment is uh, done by it's non-governmental organization, Information Resistance, uh, which is headed by one of the uh, uh, important, uh, uh, interesting figures, Mitro Timchuk, uh, who's now a member of the Russian parliament, uh, Ukrainian, sorry, Ukrainian parliament, uh, who actually did on social networks, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, a real-time uh, 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 information about what's going on. Uh, for me, it was one of the sources uh, to counter the picture which was uh, uh, in the Russian media. Uh, so to have uh, the information from the ground. They have developed a kind of threat assessment by regions. And this is from May. And you may see that uh, except of Luhansk and Donetsk, also uh, uh, regions which are under completely under control of Ukrainian uh, government, like Kharkiv or Odessa, uh, are marked by red. Uh, Kharkiv, Odessa, level eight. Uh, we're doing a uh, project as a PSSI, together with Peter Poyman, who is over there in that corner, uh, who spoke yesterday, uh, on security sector reform. And this picture shows that we are uh, right in picking uh, two regions, Kharkiv and Odessa, as, uh, as the regions where we try to, uh, to be active. Uh, now, I wonder uh, what will happen, uh, whether the situation in Zakarpatia will calm down. If not, I expect that probably it will be marked on the next map uh, of, uh, of this assessment. Now, this will be a series of maps uh, which uh, are focused on the region of uh, Donetsk and Luhansk. And uh, the first map is from July the 6th last year, one year old. And the purpose of this is to show you the volatility of the situation uh, so that you get the, on the maps, the picture of the volatility, and then I expect Vitaly will talk a little bit about the volatility on the ground, that you cannot talk about the front line. Sometimes it's fuzzy. You don't know where's the line uh, of contact. Uh, why I'm speaking about the line of contact? Because line of contact is an important element of the ceasefire agreement. And so the de definition of that line is, is, is very important. Uh, so that's the situation uh, a year ago. Uh, this is uh, end of July. And you, see, you can see uh, that the, I'm sorry, uh, the Luhansk and Donetsk uh, separatist republics are not connected. So here at the center is the crash site of, uh, of the uh, airliner, uh, Malaysian airliner from, uh, uh, going from Amsterdam. It was just 
just there. And that was the purpose of the offensive uh, last summer in August, uh, because the separatists and with the Russian support wanted to have uh, contiguous uh, uh, territory, uh, the connection between, between the two. Basically, what was important was uh, to have a control over uh, the main road is uh, connecting Donetsk and Luhansk, and this is a strategic crossroad on that. Now, this is beginning of December. You see the difference? This, this is what has been achieved by the separatists with Russian support in, in the second half of last year. They still didn't have a control of, over this strategic uh, crossroads. January. Similar, still the pocket is there. February, it's shrinking, and Vitaly is already there. <laughs> He's in the pocket. And this is March. You're out in March already, luckily. <laughs> but uh, uh, you see that there is a control over this strategic uh, crossroads. Uh, we could focus on the region of Mariupol, where there are also heavy fights uh, on the seashore. Uh, but uh, uh, since we have Vitaly here, uh, I focus the maps on, on this part of the, of the conflict. Now, this is May. You see the change in the Donetsk region, uh, region. Yeah? Approaching still further and further. And, and this is uh, basically a few days ago. Yeah. Uh, the arrows are estimate of uh, potential incursions by the separatist and Russian forces. Uh, moving ahead. Now, uh, the Minsk agreement was uh, in March, wasn't it? And so you can see that since March, uh, or later, was it April? But you see that you see the difference, you know, from from March. A lot of changes on the, on the line of contact. Now, there is a detail uh, of, uh, on the previous, my, you know, this is this place in a, in a more detail, Svitlodarsk, in February, and now, now, in this moment, I would like to interrupt my uh, presentation and ask Vitaly to uh, show us some pictures, tell us uh, what he was through there, uh, and uh, uh, then I will continue uh, uh, with, my, with my presentation. Let me tell you something about Vitaly before he comes. <laughs> Please come, come here. Uh, Vitaly is, uh, uh, was studying in Donetsk, uh, so he's not from the west of Ukraine, he's from Donbass. From and, uh, uh, and he was fighting uh, uh, how many, eight months? Eight months. Six, uh, six uh, months at war, and uh, one month in the hospital. Yeah. After the bullets. 
he told us that uh, we should forgive his uh, English because he learned English at the university, but during the fights, and you will, you will realize why, he forgot some English. <laughs> so uh, please uh, 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 forgive uh, Vitaly for uh, uh, that he's, his English is not perfect, but his message, I think, is, is, a, perfect, is, is a perfect message. Okay. <laughs> Donbass. But uh, last uh, 10 years, I live in, uh, before war, I live in Donetsk. Um, I, no, no. It's rolling, but never mind. Yes. No. It's photo, it's photo in a peaceful life in Donetsk before war. It's absolutely normal um, relations, uh, more people uh, in Donetsk uh, to Ukrainian. Okay, okay to Ukrainian national uh, symbols or Ukrainian, Ukrainian identity on Ukrainian before war, it's um, absolutely typical uh, Ukrainian city. Absolutely to tolerance to Ukrainian, to Russia, to Jewish, to uh, other nations uh, and countries. Um, but uh, but uh, Russian, oper um, Russian operation for Okay, okay. Um, uh, uh, before war, I um, I was the ordinary, ordinary, uh, ordinary uh, boy. I study in university. I drink beer. I uh, I wife usually wife, uh, but uh, uh, but um, after war, um, uh, after this escalate this conflict to Donbas. I um, first month I. Uh, to arrive to Kiev and uh, no, uh, and uh, all day I sit in Kiev and uh, question uh, for me, uh, Vitaly, uh, why you uh, uh, arrive to Kiev and don't uh, don't war to uh, against Russian? Because uh, many of my friends uh, go um, go to the war uh, war and uh, have. Um, uh, many endurance and many fight and uh, uh, to september um, last year i uh, uh, i come to recruits point uh, it's uh, dnipropetrovsk um, police and uh, come to uh, volunteers battalion uh, artemisk uh, it's a police battalion uh, but we have a special um, army function, functions. Uh, we have, uh, we uh, absolutely uh, don't have any training because um, uh, to, uh, because September it's uh, after Ilovaisk surrounding and the Ukrainian uh, um, front line have many um, problems in front line because many uh, Ukrainian forces have uh, surround in Ilovaisk. In the Ukrainian, uh, in the Russian troops, and after um, uh, after um, Ivovysk uh, surround, um, we understand uh, and we see what Russian troops uh, have attack and uh, have um, professional Russian troops have attack in Ukraine because before Ivovysk we have uh, we have fight in uh, uh, other um, uh, other separatist band or criminal gang in uh, north um, it's photo it's my uh, first photo in the war it's my block po checkpoint uh, near gorlivka uh, um, uh, village Ma mayorsk uh, near gorlivka in um, for these hills uh, start to gorlivka to gorlivka it's uh, um, it's uh, my battalion uh, war machine uh, bmp you know what is bmp uh, Bronya uh, Armage car. car. It's not tank. Mm. This is photo. This is my friend. Uh, my battalion is uh, one phrase. In my battalion, the most people uh, from Donbass in my battalion. Uh, and uh, this is, um, and uh, if you know what, this is uh, Russian stereotypes for in a volunteers' battalion, more people 
from Western Ukrainian. It's stereotypes. Many people, uh, I think um, 50 persons um, uh, in volunteers uh, battalion member, uh, it's uh, uh, men from, uh, men and women from uh, Eastern Ukrainian, from Donbass. Uh, it's um, Christopher Nunn, uh, famous British uh, photojournalist. Uh, um, I forgot uh, her uh, magazine. Um, this is a um, boy, Evgeny from Makiivka. Um, uh, it's uh, near Donetsk. Uh, no, and I. Uh, in this moment, in uh, this main moment photo, we have a Russian artillery attack, and uh, in. Uh, uh, in the high, uh, boom, boom. <laughs> you understand, yes? This is, uh, um, this, this moment we have, we, we shoot photo, uh, and my um, other um, uh, friends, uh, Dnipropetrovsky, Vlad from Kiev, um, see, uh, see, um, Svet. Light, yes. <laughs> Light in the field. And uh, it's uh, one inter interesting moment. All people in this photo are uh, students. But uh, in, in, uh, um, before, me, be, uh, at, uh, before me, because I, I, in the moment I uh, end uh, study. Uh, this guy is Dnipropetrovsk Technical University. This guy is um, Kyiv National University. Uh, this uh, guy is um, uh, Donetsk National University too, with me university. And this guy is Odessa, if I right forgot. Uh, Uh, and this photo, it's a photo I show you because uh, what you understand, what uh, if you think understand, if you think what army, uh, what you uh, uh, you understand, what you uh, view not uh, war in the Europe continent is 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 wrong. Russia don't stop after Ukraine. After Ukraine, Russia uh, will um, will attack after Ukraine. And it's uh, I think maybe. Latvia or Poland uh, on other country. This, uh, my friends, uh, come back from special mission uh, in a field near Gorlivka. Uh, it's all it's uh, Soviet uh, technique. It's all Soviet technique. Uh, um, who in who uh, you who we used? Um, it's my friend uh, Boris. We have petrol uh, near Gorlivka. It's um, Boris. It's a um, very, um, very successfully businessman in in uh, Dnipropetrovsk. Uh, but uh, but come to to the battalion. It's a triplex. It's a view for triplex uh, after um, the. Uh, Gorlivka. It's I. It's a photo before the Baltsevo. Uh, we um, we, it, we we have intelligence on field uh, who knew road in the Baltsevo because um, in the winter uh, is um, January month. Um, we und we understanding all uh, all Ukrainian army understanding what near the Baltsevo we have um, uh, Russian uh, wood attacked because uh, you see in um, the maps when the Baltsevo this is a, have a special uh, uh, geography, geography position. No, this is Kolona, is a, uh, uh, is this photo in the Baltsevo. Uh, many, it's a very popular photo in Ukraine. Many magazines and journalists publications this photo. It's uh, bright, uh, it's a famous bright in the Baltsevo. Um, uh, very strategically uh, point because um, uh, railway station in railway um, in railway uh, 
делит, делит город. Депай, это город, city on two parts, uh, and uh, very road, it's very, uh, very, um, uh, very important for army. And uh, Ukrainian, in, in the Ukrainian internet, uh, this, um, uh, this photo, he have name, uh, it's my photo, uh, Voini, Voini Sveta. Uh, the Warriors of Light. Uh, or um, uh, uh, Svetov Konstantinelia defends Ukrainian army. Lights in the end tunnel defends Ukrainian army. It's we, uh, it's uh, I and uh, and my uh, war brotherhood. Vasya, Vasya from Mariupol, uh, Va uh, Vas uh, Vasily uh, Faze, uh, candidate uh, of uh, deputy, deputy on Vikhovna Rada, Vasily Kovalenko, and uh, Vas uh, Vasily Faze, um, uh, Russian uh, terrorist when uh, come uh, invaders uh, near Mariupol, um, uh, Russian terrorist uh, killed uh, Vasya uh, Faze. And Vasya come to battalion uh, Vendetta. We have a joke. <laughs> um, uh, other, other guys in this uh, volunteers battalion Lviv. Uh, it's a very symbolic uh, photo because uh, battalion Artemisk is a battalion from Donbass and battalion uh, Lviv from Western. It's very symbolic. And um, we have uh, defense uh, the Balsevo city hall. It's a financial, uh, financial video financial department in the Balsevo city, uh, city hall. Um, when, a city hall uh, when, a, when we come to city hall, we, it's a, we have a shock because uh, only um, only table, we, we see a pen uh, who, who, who used in, uh, in the worker. Uh, to, um, um, atmosphere, um, in unreal atmosphere uh, um, in this uh, city hall. Uh, in this photo, it's like, um, when we have in surround uh, this photo in a, in a um, uh, defense builder in the city center, when we have a very hard defense uh, battle, because uh, Russian uh, troops uh, have um, uh, very rotation, um, have many rotation. One day or two day, and uh, Russia um, troops have rotation. We in surround, we don't have rotation. You understand? And we have fight all day, all night. Uh, two uh, last um, week, uh, we uh, we don't have uh, many. Uh, we, don't, we don't we don't have rotation all. Uh, This um, city hall you know, on the streets. Uh, this my friend Vasily and I. We you we can photo uh, because um, Russian. It's um, uh, 15 February um, days. In these days on uh, ceasefire. In first day on ceasefire um, when uh, Minsk Minsk two treatment. If I if I write. And uh, in Russia, in Russia, uh, mass media uh, publicate uh, on the world uh, what uh, um, what Russian uh, troops uh, invaded on the Balsava. But I and my friend, we we uh, read in internet, in Twitter, uh, and was say me, Vitali, come to city hall and use photo and publicate this photo. What uh, the Balsava? It's uh, not Russia. It's not. It's Ukraine. And uh, it's a very uh, dangerous operation because city hall control uh, um, territory near city hall controlled Chechen uh, battalion from Russia. It's Kadyrov. It's uh, very um, very good uh, for for we come back to bus uh, uh, in uh, Celia without endurance and without skills. Three guys, uh, three, three guy, three guys uh, come to in city hall, and three come back to bus. When um, when uh, come to uh, the uh, to city hall, my uh, uh, my friends who who sitting in position, uh, 
прощались. Как как? Said goodbye and don't believe what we come back on the, on on base. Um, Vasya student, I uh, I see Vasya, my friend, study in Lugansk uh, National University, Imini Dala. Oh, this uh, very 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 symbolic photo uh, because um, I uh, from Krasnoliman uh, in my native city, in my mother's native city. I have friends. Uh, her name uh, Sergey. Uh, 19 years uh, this is a boy um, and uh, uh, if, um, in battle uh, near Novogrigorevka it's um, near Debaltsevo. Uh, 19 guys uh, cute huh? died, died, died. It's um, my friends uh, uh, without, without uh, bronjilet Kevlar. Without Kevlar, uh, we don't uh, we don't know what's uh, what's uh, happen in Stelum. With, huh? with, with the body, yes, yes, body, body, yes, no. no body, no uh, no information uh, when when Malok Propol. This is a uh, this is a typical uh, picture in the Balsava. It's a very good, very important moment because um, we we sit on the Balsavo to uh, to 18 uh, February, but uh, all time Russian artillery have uh, attack in the Balsavo. It's a very uh, very horrible attack. Uh, only city have uh, many destroyed building, but after after we. Um, after we come back to Artemivsk in Ukrainian territory, uh, we sit in base, uh, open to a TV channel and see for Russian uh, TV. And Russian TV says Ukrainian army crashed to the Balsavo and attacked to the Balsavo. Why? We sit in the Balsavo six uh, months and uh, shoot city. It's known. It's fantastic and uh, normal. It's you see uh, in Stella, in the Baltsevo. It's, it's uh, Boris you show in uh, first picture. First picture, it's uh, Dmitry. It's um, uh, from Dnipro Dzerzhinsk, Dnipropetrovsk region. Uh, um, uh, Dmitry died uh, near uh, Novogrigorevka too. Uh, uh, this dancer, uh, dancing, is this is a nickname. I, I forgot uh, name. This is a dancer, um, live uh, life, but have uh, many, uh, many endurance. Have uh, leg or hand, uh, have many endurance. Um, this is a student that, um, dancer, Donetskaya, oh, Donbass uh, Machine Academy. No, and I. This is a Stella de Balsava. When I uh, Russian uh, troops invaders de Balsava, in uh, this is a Stella come to Moscow to museum uh, Russian troops. Um, this I in the Balsava. Uh, last day of, uh, before uh, come back to Artemivsk. Uh, mm, uh, Russian troops uh, uh, all time were uh, number people. It's many many people and many many uh, tanks or war machine and attacks. In Soviet Union, uh, Soviet army war this uh, and Russian army uh, war this method. Um, uh, uh, I think in all people uh, in Ukrainian think for what else, um, what after Ukrainian else, else Ukrainian uh, did no, did in defense and Russia have uh, corridor, huh? corridor corridor to the Baltsevo. Uh, uh, Russia don't stop. Uh, we have uh, uh, Latgalia, spe spe specially 
region in Latvia who uh, used uh, uh, Russian language in Russian propaganda uh, very um, uh, usually says Latgalia is uh, not Latvia, Latgalia is a specific region. Uh, we have, um, before conflict in Donbass, Russian SME says true, Donbass is near Ukraine, don't, don't Ukraine, it's especially territory. But this is a propaganda, this is a lie. Uh, all village uh, in Donbass speak, uh, many more speak Ukrainian uh, language, in, uh, with, uh, but, but not Russia. City speak, uh, speak Russia, but village uh, speak uh, Ukrainian. Uh, my city, Krasnoliman, it's um, uh, uh, more speak uh, Ukrainian, and Slovyansk, Kramatorsk uh, speak uh, Ukrainian, and, and identity, and more identity uh, for Ukrainian uh, people. Um, uh, don't, uh, don't name these terrorist rebels. It's, n it's not rebels. It's uh, typical separatists. And um, uh, you understand what um, Russian troops and these pro-Russian uh, bandits hate uh, all Ukrainian for ethnic, uh, for ethnic. In my city, when my city, Krasaliman, uh, native city, Krasaliman, uh, who have occupation, first action uh, Russian uh, bandits, it's a killed uh, Ukrainian teacher, Ukrainian uh, poets, Ukrainian uh, activists in Slovyansk too. Uh, in Kramatorsk, to, in, in all city, first action uh, would, uh, would do Russian uh, tr troops. It's uh, ethnic cleaning. Many people in Donbass. Uh, uh, identity more uh, we Donbass. We Donbass, we uh, don't Ukraine, we don't Russia, we Donbass. But it's a um, specific identity who Donbass, uh, who Russia uh, plays this identity. Uh, but uh, um, uh, Donbass, it's a very different region. North uh, part of region, it's more Ukrainian because it's an uh, old region, uh, old historical region in Slobozhanshina. Uh, in the uh, south region, uh, near Mariupol, uh, we have a um, little Greek identity. Uh, in the uh, west region, uh, Donbass, it's uh, near, near Krasnormeysk, near Selidova, uh, um, uh, we have uh, more Ukrainian, Dobropilia, we have more Ukrainian identity, uh, because it's uh, near, uh, uh, near uh, Hamland, Ukraine. Uh, but a uh, uh, rain, rain region, uh, um, rain region, uh, Donbass, it's uh, Snezhnoye, Kharcysk, Torres, when, uh, when we have a very big um, agglomeration city, uh, more identity Soviet Union. It's a, in Lugansk, in Lugansk, uh, north uh, territory in Lugansk, Svatova and other city, absolutely Ukrainian identity, and because it's a Sobozhanshina near Kharkiv. Uh, but uh, Iron, uh, Iron uh, region, it's no, it's, it's, so, it's Soviet identity because um, it's uh, many, it's a, Donbass is a Soviet uh, experiment for people. It's a, it's a build a new people, Hitler uh, building a new people, and Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet system built a new people too. Uh, no, it's a problem, Ukraine. Uh, it's a, um, we, uh, I know uh, what um, many, many weapons we, we have uh, in, um, продаем, отправляем. Sell, да, sell, sell to world, but, uh, but, our Ukraine, but our troops have, a, have a, a usually problem in, uh, in these uh, we, we, weapons. But now, but last year, um, uh, biggest percent, per, per percent uh, um, technique in machine in, uh, come to the 
regular Ukrainian, Ukrainian troops because uh, all system, all Ukrainian system uh, start to to war, the economy and political. We understand what is what is war, and uh, but but when um, conflict start, uh, in this don't understand, and public and government don't understand. But now understand the uh, and you and uh, many equipment Ukrainian made and uh, many. Uh, other war product uh, create and uh, send uh, to army. <laughs> Thank you. So this is one of the lines which is uh, which is drawn. It changes every day, and uh, but it's very important because. Uh, it's, it's a part of the concept of the ceasefire that you will have a certain line of uh, uh, separation and contact. Uh, it doesn't work. It works. Was there something before? No, that's it. Now, let me speak a little bit about uh, the uh, motivation uh, behind uh, the Russian thinking. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know who Fyodor Lukyanov is, uh, he's the editor of uh, uh, Russia in Global Affairs. Uh, he's uh, not that old, he's a, I would say, relatively young uh, Russian uh, analyst and he's considered to be very close to, to Kremlin views. Uh, and in one uh, interview, which is already in last year, uh, published in last year, uh, he actually explained uh, the thinking behind uh, 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 the Russian actions in Ukraine. First of all, uh, Russia was actually trying to uh, spread uh, in the population, but also they were trying to convince each other about the fears uh, from Ukraine. So that was a kind of shared fears in the Russian establishment. Ukrainian revolution might infect Russia. It's, that's why Ukraine is, is, is so uh, actually sensitive for Russia. Because, uh, okay, in Baltic states, they joined European Union, NATO, they are different, uh, but Georgians, they're also different, uh, but Ukrainians, uh, they are like us. Uh, Putin even said that Ukraine is not a nation, so I mean, there's this kind of sense, uh, this is us. If revolution can happen in Ukraine, it can happen in Moscow. So it's, it's a direct threat to the regime. Uh, now, the partnership with the West. Ukraine will suddenly be part of the West. So West is coming. West is coming closer to us. Uh, they had an agreement about uh, Sevastopol, uh, the Black Sea Fleet, but they were constantly afraid that they may use it. They even invented uh, uh, some uh, fake reports that NATO wants to take over uh, Sevastopol in previous years. Uh, then this uh, 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 narrative of hardliner nationalists who are anti-Russian, anti-Russian speakers, which if you go deeper, then you realize uh, this is not about language. <laughs> yeah, as you may see, uh, uh, Vitaly is, you know, both Uc speaks both Ukrainian and Russian, and there's no problem <laughs> in, in, in language. There's no language problem. Of course, there was a very unfortunate uh, 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 thing about declaring this uh, language law, but it keeps, you know, uh, repeating in the Russian propaganda and again and again. Now, policy uh, in Lukyanov's view, uh, and we've heard it from uh, Peter Kolars this morning, it's reactive. It wasn't a big, grand strategy. It was a reactive. And uh, so, Based on these fears, the seizure, uh, annexation of Crimea uh, was a kind of uh, compensation for uh, uh, the fact that Russia cannot control the whole Ukraine. Yeah? 
he was very specific about costs of further annexation. That's why even from last year, I was, uh, I was almost sure that Russia will not go further, uh, uh, proceed further, because already uh, having Crimea and Donetsk and, and Luhansk is, is a big liability to, uh, to Russia. It's a big burden. Uh, and of course, the costs of uh, further approach uh, uh, of, uh, of Russia further on would be sanctions, uh, direct uh, expense of supporting, because if you are responsible, if you annex something, you are responsible for it. I mean, the costs for Crimea are, are a big burden already. Uh, of course, uh, if Russia will move more aggressively, uh, it will uh, create a reaction in Kiev. The government in Kiev will definitely not be friendly, <laughs> will be more hostile to Russia. And, uh, and it might crumble uh, the coalition of various uh, forces in Europe, political forces, who are basically uh, open to Russian point of view. Because if Russia will be aggressive, it will be very difficult for uh, defenders of Russian point of view in Europe. So, uh, collapse of pro-Russian forces in, in Europe. Uh, so, in his view, this is Lukyanov's view, uh, the goal is to get Ukraine decentralized uh, and building a disabling device. I like this notion, disabling device. Uh, by having uh, a regions which are not under control of uh, this, uh, the government in Kiev, you basically disable Ukrainian strategic decision making. Because uh, I call it the shoe in the door. <laughs> if uh, a criminal comes to rob your apartment and, and has a shoe in the door, uh, you know, you're not safe. And that's exactly what is, what is happening, what's happened in Georgia and what has happened to, to Ukraine. And that's the goal. Uh, so it will basically uh, cause uh, that, in fact, Ukraine will be neutral, whatever the will of Ukrainian el elite and nation will be. Uh, the conclusion was that, okay, there is not going to be, Russia is not going to take over uh, uh, big parts of Ukraine, but the future conflicts are inevitable. They will not be calm. Now, about the Russian tactics. We see there is no big ground strategy, there is tactics. Uh, it was a very interesting interview which I use as uh, illustration of, uh, of these tactics by uh, Russian military uh, expert Pavel Felgenhauer. Uh, it was an interview for Ukrainska Pravda recently, last week. And I think this is, this is an important corrective to last year's view of the Russian experts. Some of the, uh, of the observations of Felgenhauer. Uh, Russia does not wage a hybrid war, but it's a regular war. It's nothing new in it. I mean, basically confirms what some Western experts are saying, hybrid war, what, what, what is that? It's, it's nothing new. It's been here, you know, for ages. You always use all, you know, non-military tools you have if you are in war. But it's a, it's a secret war. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to, uh, to, to hear from the authoritative uh, Russian independent but authoritative expert admitting that this is, this is a war, but Russia wants to keep it secret. And he argues that, well, this is a 47th secret war. <laughs> if you calculate all the wars the Soviet Union was waging in the third world, in Africa, uh, around the world. Uh, and he, you know, he asks some questions. He says, do, do you know how many Russian uh, officers died in Ethiopia? <laughs> Have you ever heard about Russian generals died in combat in Ethiopia in uh, in 80s? You never heard. It was a secret war. It wasn't Afghanistan, a kind of open uh, conflict. So uh, it's just another secret war in uh, uh, abroad. Uh, he was saying that uh, Russia is ready uh, 
uh, for summer offensive. Uh, it's massing uh, the troops. Uh, uh, well, this just confirms what we, what we see from satellite and from, from other reports. Uh, but his argument is that the most probable uh, approach will be a limited campaign. What it means? Uh, I think Russians are afraid of city fight, of fighting in the city, uh, because it's very dangerous. Vitaly has been in a city fight. <laughs> you know that this is, uh, this is so unpredictable, and you, you have losses. And that's what Russia doesn't want. And Russians have seen and acknowledged that there is a determination on the Ukrainian side. So it will not be without a price. The, the price will be heavy. So his sense is, uh, we're not going to take big cities. Uh, not Mariupol, uh, not uh, uh, big cities in, in Donbas, but uh, create a big battles uh, using, uh, you know, very massive, uh, uh, creating a small massacres to frighten. That's the message. And, and that's the assumption. Uh, we don't want to occupy Ukraine. We just want Ukraine to crumble, <laughs> to be a failed state. We want Ukrainian soldiers like Vitaly to escape out of fear. That's the strategy. Yeah. Uh, shock and awe, <laughs> that's what we've heard. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the idea. And, uh, and of course, uh, attacking means radicalization on the, on the uh, Ukrainian side. So you bet that Russia loves any incidents with the uh, right sector, because uh, it just plays into this scenario to have uh, internal conflict in Ukraine. And what is interesting, uh, that uh, he sees that Russia is basically engaging in a diplomatic offensive. Uh, it's clear towards the United States. Uh, Russia is constantly saying, look, Iran just heard that there has been an agreement on, uh, on nuclear uh, with Iran, finally. Uh, of course, Russia is absolutely necessary for that agreement as a, as a permanent member of, of the United uh, Nations Security Council. But the same goes for uh, Daesh, for the Islamic State. They say, well, this is a common enemy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, guess what uh, uh, Kerry and Putin were talking uh, uh, at Sochi recently? <laughs> well, that was exactly that. Uh, but at the same time, he mentions also Japan. He, uh, uh, so Russia is not only uh, courting China, but, uh, but is playing with the idea that there might be a compromise on the territorial dispute on, Kir uh, on Kuril Islands, which has looked you know, absolutely impossible. Why? Because wants to get Japan out of this you know, uh, block which condemns Russia for what is going in Ukraine and again, undermining unity of, of the EU. So these were two, uh, uh, basically, points of view from, uh, from Russian point of view. Uh, again, I repeat, uh, this summer school was not close to Russian, uh, but we were uh, actually, we didn't get that many uh, applications. I would love to have Russian here. <laughs> Uh, but the problem is that, and we are talking uh, with some uh, people who know the situation, that if you are a student in, in Russia uh, and you apply for uh, something which is organized by NATO or, or the West, you're exposed to intimidation, uh, you're threatened that you'll be ousted of the university. I mean, this is, this is a problem. And, uh, and they are doing it on purpose, because if we will be able to actually engage with uh, uh, Russian students here, uh, we would have a much more plastic picture than just reading uh, and trying to analyze what, uh, what the uh, uh, Russian analysts are saying. Uh, again, the uh, isolation 
between the people is, is uh, uh, something which is in Russian interest. And, uh, and we don't have a recipe how to break, uh, how to communicate with Russian society in, this, uh, in these circumstances. Uh, as Vitaly was uh, actually uh, 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 saying about uh, uh, meeting the, the, the Russian guy from Moscow, uh, uh, being brainwashed by the propaganda and, and not being uh, able to understand the other side. Now, again, some maps. Uh, I, I have here two maps. 28th and 29th of June, just to show you how the situation is, you see, it's, it's every day different, yeah? It's nothing, no more message in these maps than just to see how, how it changes. Uh, one remark, uh, sources of information. Uh, taking into account what you were discussing yesterday, afternoon about the Russian propaganda and trolling. Uh, there's one absolutely key element and this is uh, sources of information. What sources of information are we using? And what sources do we consider as, as relevant when providing analysis? I can tell you that a lot of uh, uh, politicians in this country are uh, a, actually base their analysis on the, on the headlines from, uh, from some newspapers, which they even don't check whether the newspaper was just publishing something which was published by Reuters or uh, by Russia Today. They don't check it. They just you know, take it as, as a granted. And, uh, and this, is, this is the most sensitive thing, you know, how you, you'll check the... Uh, uh, the real situation on, on the ground. <coughs> That's why uh, there are several <coughs> websites. Uh, one is uh, uh, it's called uh, Life Ukraine TV. Uh, this, is, this was the source of the first maps. This was, uh, I think this is from InfoResist or from other, uh, other, other uh, sites, which mushroomed in Ukraine because they realized and it was not started by the government, but it was started by, by the activists, uh, that the only uh, defense they can do against the propaganda is to provide maximum of facts uh, from, from the ground. Uh, of course, there are, uh, message, uh, there are daily reports by OSCE. You asked about the OSCE mission. Uh, they produce daily reports, but uh, this is also a sort of, uh, information source. <laughs> you, can, you can use it. But uh, one has to check the sources against uh, each other when, when, when using it. Now, okay. My summary of Russian scenarios for Ukraine. Crimea is gone, is ours, as they say. Uh, full annexation, there is no other scenario for Crimea. Now, what are the scenarios for Ukraine minus Crimea? Uh, there's a Bosnia and Herzegovina scenario. So you create a very complex internal constitutional mechanism which basically will uh, inhibit any decision making in the country. Uh, that's something uh, uh, the Russians uh, have in mind. They uh, actually uh, have a very uh, close link to, uh, to Republika Srpska, to the Serbian part of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and they know how to block the system through this. Of course, there is a scenario of division. Uh, this is still talked about. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm having here Germany or Sudan. I mean, uh, if I, I found some expressions that uh, some Russians were saying, okay, uh, we wouldn't mind if Ukraine will be divided yeah, to the Western and Eastern Ukraine. Uh, or a failed state. I have here Somalia as an example. 
Uh, all this fulfill the criteria that Ukraine will not function as the sovereign state. Uh, all three scenarios are, are for that. Now, what with Donetsk and Luhansk, with the east of Ukraine? Of course, there is a uh, Kosovo scenario, uh, which means declaration of independence, complete secession, and a recognition, I have full in brackets, uh, uh, it will not be full. Kosovo is not recognized by every nation, but it's, it's basically broadly recognized. It seems to me that this is over, that there has been some attempt, but uh, they no longer bet on, on, on this. Of course, there is a Abkhazia, South Ossetia uh, 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 scenario. Uh, these uh, separatist republics are uh, or entities, are they republics? I don't know. Uh, are recognized by two countries, but they are basically recognized. Or Transnistria, which as far as I know is not recognized by anybody, but still is a, is a territory with the ambiguity. Yeah? So these are the scenarios from Russian point of view for uh, 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 Donetsk and Luhansk. Uh, this is important because we'll, in the end, we come to Minsk, Minsk agreement, and in my view, none of these uh, scenarios is in compliance with the Minsk agreement, and that's the problem. Uh, these are illustration of the uh, models uh, I, I mentioned uh, for those who uh, do not know uh, what uh, we were talking about. I mean, here, here, Bosnia, Transnistria, uh, even some sort of uh, North Caucasus uh, models can be considered. Not necessarily Chechnya, but Ingushetia. Uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, Sudan, uh, Ossetia, Abkhazia, Kosovo, just for illustration. Now, who are the actors? And now we are coming to, uh, to our task, because your task will be uh, to do briefing to some actors of this development uh, about Minsk Agreement. Uh, international organizations, UN, NATO, uh, European Union, OSCE, uh, then, uh, of course, Ukraine, Russia, Germany, France, so-called Normandy uh, uh, format, that was the format of Minsk, and the United States, we uh, cannot uh, leave aside. Now, this is a summary of Minsk II agreement. And uh, your uh, task will be to do a briefing about the Minsk agreement, around the Minsk agreement. Uh, why? I, we may say this is completely irrelevant now. <laughs> But maybe it's irrelevant on the ground, but it's kept in the diplomatic mantra. If you, if you uh, uh, listen to anybody who uh, speaks about uh, uh, conflict, Ukrainian-Russian conflict, uh, everybody uh, actually uh, swears on Minsk too, and Minsk should be implemented and, and, and things like that. And nobody is pressing them to say, well, how, how, how you would like to do that. Uh, ceasefire. Uh, everything has a kind of assumption that there is a line of contact and separation clear. It's not clear, <laughs> as we've seen. Uh, to have a ceasefire, then you have to fix, you know, uh, 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 it's moving and there is no ceasefire. Pull out of heavy weapons. You know, some, there were specific weapons, uh, you know, the uh, uh, rocket launchers, uh, the big artillery had to be removed. But how, how you can, uh, you know, control that, verify that? Monitoring and verification of this, of ceasefire and weapon pullout by OSCE. We've heard how, uh, how OSCE uh, operates. Uh, 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 it's not uh, uh, trusted by, by Kiev government for uh, 
uh, I would say, relevant reasons. Uh, but it's the only mission uh, uh, available at the moment. Uh, there should be a dialogue on modalities of conducting local elections uh, without any any big dialogue, uh, uh, Mr. Zakharchenko, the separatist leader of, uh, of uh, Donetsk, has declared the date of elections uh, in Donetsk. Uh, there was a paragraph about the pardon and amnesty by a way of enacting a law. I think it's an important element if, uh, uh, in the end of the implementation of agreement, you have to grant the pardon and amnesty, uh, otherwise you will be in a, in a mutual uh, uh, battle of, uh, 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 you know, uh, of lawyers. On the other hand, uh, the humanitarian law is, uh, is being breached and, uh, and that the problem is the scope of the pardon. Uh, does it include the torture? Well, it shouldn't probably. Uh, it should probably include just the participation in, in, in the fight, but not necessarily in, in, in some specific forms of fight. Uh, it's, it's very, very unclear how that would be implemented. Release and exchange of all hostages. Uh, Vitaly, uh, are there still some hostages kept by separatists? Are you aware of this? Or has the exchange been fulfilled? No, there are still some kept in, yeah, on both sides. Only, only little group, uh, yes. Yeah. Again, safe access, delivery, storage, and distribution of humanitarian aid. Okay, you've seen uh, the map uh, before, and uh, that's uh, probably a very, and I will show you another map uh, uh, about the. Uh, uh, safety of uh, humanitarian aid uh, later on. There, will be, there should be restored social and economic connections and including social transfer. As far as I know, the Kiev government stopped uh, paying pensions to uh, people in the separatist regions uh, because of good reasons and there hasn't been any, any talk about uh, how to settle this. Uh, uh, yes. They are still paying something. Yes. Yes. Which makes it yeah. So. Basically, uh, this is about the modalities of the restoration of these connections. So that that will that that would work, you know. Well, I've heard that there were there were some talks about you know stopping the uh, uh, delivery of uh, of the social transfers. But uh, again, I mean, it, there is a logic in that. Uh, why you should pay from the taxes which are collected on, not on that territory, because the Kiev government doesn't get anything uh, uh, in taxes uh, from the separatist regions. So basically it's a one-way uh, transfer. Yeah, but it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you cannot transfer, yeah. It's basically one, one, one of the points which I, I don't see fully implemented anyway. I mean. uh, restore control of the state border to the Ukraine government. Oh, <laughs> you know, wait a minute. There, is, there are fights going on, uh, convoys going from Russia here and there, and, and we're talking about restating of, uh, of the border control. Of course, in some parts of the border, it's been restored, but not uh, in the rear of the Luhansk and, and, and Donetsk. I cannot imagine how to, how to do that. Uh, it should be under uh, international control. I cannot imagine how, how otherwise it would be, it would be done. Uh, 
pull out or falling out formation. Ah, okay, again, uh, uh, there is a pulling in, but not pulling out. Constitutional reform of, in Ukraine, uh, it means the decentralization law, local elections, and the, uh, and, and the working groups of trilateral contact uh, uh, group. Uh, I can return to this uh, brief uh, 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 summary, but of course you can, uh, it's on, on Wikipedia, it's everywhere, it's accessible, so you can, you can take it during your uh, working uh, uh, time uh, if you need it to have in detail uh, what's in there. Now, so coming to the end my, of my uh, presentation. So your task will be, we'll have five groups and you are to prepare a policy briefing uh, for either MFA or security cabinet of Ukraine, Russian Federation, uh, the third group will be Germany or France uh, as the uh, uh, European guarantors of, uh, of Minsk Agreement, uh, Poland and United States. There should be recommendations and, that should be, uh, and there should be methods how to, how to achieve that. Of course, uh, the problems of Minsk II implementation uh, this means something very different in Kremlin and in Kiev and in Berlin. <laughs> so you should put yourself into the shoes of that particular perspective. Uh, and you may uh, discuss about uh, does our government, those who we are going to brief, uh, want to implement the agreement or in, in, in which way it does want or does it want to put obstacles into it? That's question. I don't have here, uh, you know, uh, the task is not to assume that uh, every government is, you know, fully in line with, uh, with Minsk agreement. You know, it's, it's, it's a big compromise full of, you know, ambiguities and uh, it's part of your task to uh, ask yourselves what are the problems of Minsk implementation from the point of view of your particular uh, government. If you answer that, agree on the assumptions, uh, what are the problems, then you can, uh, you can define the actors to be supported and factors to be encouraged. And the question is whether you will do it bilaterally or, or via international organizations. Uh, to put it in a, in a uh, you know, concrete way, uh, you uh, may say to Ukrainian government that uh, uh, you need a bilateral uh, 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 military support <laughs> from particular governments and not rely on uh, organizations. Uh, or you may say, in this, we have to rely on organizations, we cannot do it bilaterally. It, de it depends. Also, you may take into account the behavior uh, of the international organizations. So, this is what I call factors. For example, uh, do you want United Nations to be active? in it? Do you want to involve United Nations into that or not? Would you consider United Nations uh, 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 resolution uh, favorable to your government interest or not? I mean, this may be a factor. Methods. Uh, you can do things in discrete way, uh, discrete pressure, discrete action, uh, there's definitely a public element because of the information uh, space, uh, taking into account the propaganda, information war, public diplomacy information campaign, definitely. Economic measures like sanctions, military assistance could be something else. <laughs> it's not necessarily, it's not exhaustive, but it's just to, to you have to be very concrete. Uh, 
this is how I would see, I mean, you should spend some time on the problems, but don't too much time on that. Uh, the factors, uh, you have to decide very quickly, because you can talk hours about factors. You have to decide very quickly what factors and actors you would like to address in your recommendations. Yeah? Come to agreement. We are going to, you know, narrow our briefing on something. Yeah? And recommend the methods which are related to these factors and actors. Then you can talk a little bit more about the, the methods. That's why I think defining the problem and methods should be more time. Uh, discuss factors. If you don't want to be, you know, endless uh, debate, you have to be very quick and say, okay, let's do it very quickly, decide in a group uh, what, what is of interest of us all to, uh, to put there. And you have to prepare notes for the briefing. Uh, again, the simulation uh, is uh, you are under time pressure. Usually in, uh, in, in the real life, uh, you get the phone call uh, that in one hour you have to come to the Prime Minister's office and to, to, to do a briefing. You don't have much time uh, to, to do that. You know? So that's why you know, this is not the artificial. Maybe my 30 minutes is more realistic than 45. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, try to narrow that down. Uh, uh, think about it. This is not for you to enjoy academic debate. This is for you to produce something. And uh, uh, I will not criticize you uh, that you have omitted something and you focused on something. That's, that's your choice. <laughs> that's what, what you're doing. Just try to uh, simulate that situation.